subscribe is going to be good in a minute or two and then we will get going. Um, yeah, just a little bit and then we will be good to go. Okay, we are live. So hello everybody, my name is Amanda and I am Deputy Editor at Professional Beauty. Thank you for joining our webinar today on this, what was a sunny but now slightly cloudy and overcast day. Um, today I'm joined by Stefania Rossi. Um, she's the Director of PB Award winning salon Utopia Beauty and Advanced Skincare. And she's also the founder of recruitment agency Stefania Fania Rossi Recruitment. And today she's going to be talking about how to nurture and motivate your team when you can finally reopen your salon post coronavirus lockdown and the many challenges that comes with this from managing staff levels when some staff may still be on furlough or some can only be brought back part time to how to manage your therapist aspirations when the salon might be struggling financially and you can't actually give those promotions yet. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today, Stefania. I hope you're good. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to introduce yeah. yourself a little bit more, Stefania, just before we kind of properly kick off with the webinar. Yeah, brilliant. OK, well, thank you so much for having me, Amanda. I'm really, really excited. And it's, a, it's certainly a, a topic very close to my heart. My background, as you know, is um, I've managed very large teams for 25 years in the learning and skills sector. I also, my background is in training as well. And um, I have over 15 years of recruitment background working for large five-star hotels in London. So my passion has always been around managing teams and certainly um, trying to help individuals find the, the, the best employer out there and, and, and really help them progress in their careers in the best possible way that we can. So I've got um, my salon is uh, home ch in, in Hornchurch, Utopia Beauty, and I've had it for the last seven years. And um, I'm absolutely thrilled to discuss this topic with you today about, you know, um, the future of our therapies and the career paths as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Stefania. Um, so just to everybody who's watching, hello by everyone, by the way. It looks like we've got people from all over the UK, which is Yeah, great. I've just seen that. You don't have to <laughs> again, Bahrain. I know. I know. Um, so just letting you know, um, I've got some questions that I'm going to be asking Stefania during this webinar. But if you do have any questions for her, if you just post it in the chat box on Zoom or on the comment box on Facebook, I will make sure to get your question asked by her at the end. Um, so I guess we'll just kick off, Stefania, with the key point of this kind of webinar is how can salon owners nurture and motivate their teams when they finally reopen post coronavirus and how do they go about doing that? Well, very, very interesting question. I think it's how we're going to motivate a team that has actually been on holiday for three months. It's, it's a really good question. Um, I am very excited because I think it's, it's so important that we, we do welcome our, our teams back in the right way. And also, I think we, we've got quite a bit of a preparation to do to, to get the teams back in, into our businesses. We need to think that it's been three months is a very long time um, without seeing our members of staff. Although obviously, we all done, you know, the Zoom catch up calls um, and, you know, all the sort of, you know, group chats and things. But I think without having worked with them for three months and, and for all of us not being together for three months is a very, very long time. So I think as you know, in terms of preparation, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, what I'm going to be doing with my teams, which is, um, um, I think, so, so important. I think as part of the, the normal sort of team meetings um, that we're going to have with the team, I think it's, it's also so important to meet on a one to one basis with each individual. I think as salon owners, we've, we've had long time to think about our new business we've had long time to reflect on where we want to to go to um, our business some of our business might not look the same um, and in fact it will be totally different it will be a totally different business in three months time so it's also important we we also sit down with with the teams with each team member and actually understand what have the, the reflections been of a lockdown what um, what has changed for them? What uh, um, what they have been thinking? I you know do they want to change anything within what when they come back? Have they had any brilliant ideas, for example, in terms of of the business? 
And certainly, potentially, some of the motivators, the key drivers that they had, might not be the same anymore. So it's, you know, it's, it's really critical before we actually do anything to really try to understand, you know, their point of view. And also, I think it's um, within the welcome and within the, the sort of one-to-ones, it's, it's all very important that we also reconnect with them. And yeah. we also have an opportunity to, um, to tell them how we value them and, you know, remind them of why we pick them to be um, part of our, you know, team members and, and remind them about the key strengths that they had in our business as well. And ultimately find out why they, they love the job. So really get them to fall in love with the job again. So I think that reconnection is also very important. Personally, I think it's also so important to share our um, maybe new vision, it might be a, a different vision as well, um, sharing the values for the business and really get them to be totally invested into our business again, you know, so they're totally part of that business from, from day one, contributing, as I said, for, to those ideas, they might have had loads and loads of different ideas as well whilst they've been on lockdown. And I think that's so important to really realign where we're going with our business to make sure that it's this sort of on top on top of that um, to support us, you know, going forward with, with those objectives. I think also um, as part of, you know, that motivation to me, critically as a salon owner is, is uh, important to share, you know, what new normality is going to look like with the teams and also the financial reality we're going to be facing because that is also quite um, important they're aware of that you know all of us salon owners managers um, we've been working really really hard for the last three months to make sure that we've got a business to come back to you know mm -hmm. making sure we've got um, jobs to go back to and certainly trying to retain uh, most of the team so I for one will be more uh, I'm going to be open and very honest with the team to, to share, you know, the, the challenges from a financial point of view and the loans potentially that we have to take to keep the business open as well. So having that honest approach will be quite important to get the team totally invested in, in, in our new businesses. I think that's so important, that open communication, because, yeah, I guess they are going to be slightly worried, come back to work anyway, and I guess worrying about the state of the business, seeing as you haven't been able to operate for X amount of time. And like you said as well, it's going to be a new normal, isn't it? A new way of working when we come back. So if your team members do have any great ideas on how they can improve that or make that better, then I guess it's just about giving them the chance to share those ideas and make them feel like they are helping to drive the business forward as much as I guess you are. Yeah, absolutely. And I think those initial conversations, you know, in the first couple of weeks with individuals on a one to one basis is quite important because A, we'll rem remember what were the motivators for each of the, these individuals. But, you know, the motivation might have changed over the last three months. Mm. So I think we need to, as salon owners, we also need to think about we've got a, a variety of team members. So what is it that motivates them? So, you know, I will be introducing um, um, so obviously some fun activities we're going to have some you know fun competitions there will be fun targets for, for the team as well to achieve all together we're going to have more training opportunities potentially because obviously our suppliers have been amazing to provide so much online training so some individuals will be very very motivated to continue with, with that progression in terms of, of training some team members might be more um, uh, motivated by the flexibility that we might be able to give mm -hmm. them, you know, the fact that we might come, not come back on a full-time basis. And, 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 um, and certainly uh, will be very much about an opportunity for them to be motivated about having treatments yeah. <laughs> that we have a few days really coming back into the business and, and yeah. having treatments before and make ourselves presentable for our clients. <laughs> that will be a biggest motivator for me for sure. Yeah. Um, and I think cakes. You yeah. know, cakes, is always, <laughs> cakes is always a good winner. You know, yeah, you can't underestimate the power of a good cake, can you, to lift morale? Um, <laughs> um, so I think definitely as well that there's definitely going to be challenges that salon owners are going to potentially face when they bring team members back who have been on furlough and um, actually just before we start this webinar Stefania and I were talking about it because there's so many different aspects that need to be considered 
Um, you know, are you able to outline what some of these challenges might be and how you're managing them in your salon? Sure. I think we anticipated when we reopen um, that we obviously we have a huge rush in the next in, in the first eight weeks. But I also think that we need to be quite mindful of the fact that you know we also are going to have a percentage of those clients that might not want to come back mm. to our salons because they don't really feel that safe yet. So I think within with, with that in mind and the fact that we still have we are still managing quite a number of unknowns, you know, are we gonna have treatment restrictions and you know how we can operate and the full sort of um, guidelines are not being issued yet so I think what we can immediately think is the fact that some of the immediate challenges Amanda I think would be around managing staff levels you mm. know so how are we going to 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 deliver the treatments uh, how many individuals are gonna we're we gonna bring in part-time how many we're we gonna be on a full-time basis who are we going to bring in? Do we leave some members of staff on, on furlough? Mm. And again, you know, how do you make those choices? So that is obviously quite an important challenge for us. I also think, you know, the occupancy rates will be, again, um, a challenge because, as I said from the start, you know, we're not going to be able to deliver as many treatments in a day. And mm. certain teams we're going to bring in potentially are going to be on different ships so the amount of people that you can bring in is, is is different yeah i think also there are there will be concerns i mean potentially in my team as well i've got um four of my girls are children so another mm. issue around you know childcare. um obviously schools don't go back until september so you know yeah. an, an issue that we need to potentially face uh, at some point around, you know, um, our team members not being able to have that, that, that childcare. I think also how we going to manage our team's anxieties and fear, mm. because like all of us, you know, salon owners, we, we obviously don't know what we're going to face, but certainly for, for some of our team members, you know, there might be um, a mental, you know, um, kind of, um, issue in terms of, you know, how I don't feel, you know, very comfortable in coming back and, and I don't know what to expect. So we really need to, to make sure that, you know, that, um, that we, we reassure them and we work with them to make sure, so that they feel safe and we work and we understand, you know, the, the fears as well, it will be on, on a um, uh, deeper level. I also think that um, in terms of challenges we are facing already and we will be facing even more difficult conversations with um, some of our team members. Although I don't like to say difficult conversations, I like to refer them as truthful conversations <laughs> um, because of the, 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 the fact that, as we know, once we go back, we're all gonna be like head down, we're gonna be working. It will be potentially that we have to stop or impose pre-authorized holidays. Yeah. And Another thing we also need to think about is the fact that even, you know, if we do authorize some of the holidays, we always have, at this point in time, as far as we know, we have the quarantine to think about. So if someone was going on holiday for a week and then got to quarantine, then actually it will be three weeks or for two weeks it will be four weeks. So that is something that we need to take into consideration, which potentially might um, affect Team morale and uh, but again obviously we need to think about you know the business needs the clients needs as well I think also when we think about uh, difficult conversations is also um, some businesses sadly might look into redundancies the first couple of weeks or couple of months that they open because they might not have you know the, the rush of clients potentially because some salons have changed the, the strategy, they've changed the, the overall business model. So perhaps, you know, you know, the staffing levels that they have before are going to be decreasing. Um, and ultimately, I think, thinking about the team as well, it could well be that we, we might need to, to have discussion with some of the, the members that are not particularly bought into our new normality. Mm. And they might not be wanting to cooperate with, with our businesses as well. Um, 
And also, let's not forget about PPE as well, Amanda. Yeah. I, you know, I've had conversations with my teams as well, and, and there is a level of, 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 of fear about, you know, do I have to wear the mask all the time? How is it going to affect my skin? And, and how are we doing that? And, you know, and even feeling, looking a little bit different as well, you know? Um, so, and ultimately, one of the, the, the biggest, uh, you know, issues and challenges, I guess, will be for us, managing that uh, reduction in revenue. Yeah. Because that's kind of the reality. We won't mm. be able to operate the way we used to operate. Um, mm. It's very well, tough, I think, isn't it? It's very yeah. tough. And there's so many different factors to think about. And also, um, even as you said as well, about who to bring back from furlough. Obviously, there's changes with the furlough scheme as well in August, isn't there, where the government's going to be requiring employers to pay more. And that in itself is just a whole other thing to think about. Um, for you, are you going to be bringing your full team back to start with or half your team? Like, How are you going to be opening yeah so we um i'm a great believer that it's so so important that we we um involve every team member in this discussion so we are looking at different options so we've got option one option two option three so we'll be looking i will be looking to stagger the, the, the two teams so we'll have um uh, we'll be opening seven days a week our opening hours will also be extended to allow you know different shifts of teams to come in as mm. twos or threes depending again waiting for government guidelines yeah, and to restrictions <laughs> but certainly the idea is that you know we will be um we will be bringing in teams and and yes i will be bringing in part-timers to begin with so obviously there will be some individuals on on furlough and i think it's also very important because when we when we have the team discussions amanda we the individuals that are on furlough are the individuals that are also wanting, they've got childcare issues. Mm. They are looking at it as a team and looking at every sort of, you know, obviously business needs is, is obviously very important, but also see how we can fit in every single um, members of the teams. And 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 it's, it, I think that some of them are coming back with brilliant ideas. I even, even <laughs> thought of, and, you know, and I think that's, that's the beauty about, you know, being clear and and having that honest communication with, with the teams as well mm. I guess it's important for salon owners just to be mindful that um, even though the businesses might be reopening life still isn't normal like you said those with children might not be able to access childcare, and that can be a big issue or they might be able to get it from relatives but I guess it's depending on when those people are available so I guess it's trying to juggle many balls isn't it basically it, it yeah. is and you know um, you know, once you've been obviously they all been on furlough for, for three months, mm -hmm. and there are in, in other businesses there will be individuals that need to earn 100% quite quickly, go back to normal because yeah. of the loans as well. So these are all the things that again we need to to think about and, and support our teams with. Um, because as I said, you know, so, some individuals will be quite happy to continue to be on furlough. <laughs> the weather is great. <laughs> Others might want to come back. So, um, yeah, we, I think it, personally in my team we'll have, um, we'll have different models, um, but certainly we'll be taking um, the, the opportunity to carry on, on some furloughs as well. Mm. And um, just looking at your list of bullet points as well, Stefania, just about you made this um, for this question. And one of your bullet points was about commission. And I guess for some therapists, their commission is um, really important. So will you be keeping your commission rates the same or will you be slightly altering them when you're just starting to get the business back up and running again? Or have you not decided that yet? Is that still to be... Commission, or? yeah. So I think commission is quite important for those individuals are very obviously driven by um, by the financial aspect of the jobs. With, with our commission structure, it's quite difficult at this point in time to determine what and how we're going to manage that because it's because we've got so many still unknowns. I mean, you know, how are we going to operate? What treatments? Mm -hmm. um, what specific treatments are we going to be able to bring in? So, you know, if, if there was a certain target in the past linked to that commission structure, it's something that at this point in time will be quite difficult to determine. Yeah. Um, and that's why, again, I go back to, to you know, to those one-to-ones conversations with our members of staff in the next, once we reopen, is so 
critical that we really understand um, and, and how we're going to help them really realign what they want, their aspirations, their motivators to, to our business as well. So we basically, we sort of manage every single situation together. Yeah. And how can salon owners manage therapists' aspirations for wanting to progress career-wise during this quite difficult time financially? Um, especially, you know, if there's some salon owners who can't give promotions right now, given the situation, how can they kind of still manage therapist career path during this really difficult time? Um, I think personally, I mean, obviously I've got two hats here. I've got my salon owner hat and I've got <laughs> my recruitment hat on as well. You know. So let me, the salon owner um, answer would be, uh, personally, I think it's, it's never been so important to now to help our therapists to continue progress within our businesses. Obviously, we need to bear in mind that we do have the financial constraints, but I also need to think that not every single, not the progressions and the aspirations don't necessarily need to be linked to, um, to financials. I think we've got also an opportunity to, to look at the opportunities that are out there because of, of the fact that, you know, when I say, I usually say that I like to create career paths within, within my business because I, I want to work with those individuals. I identify the, the key strengths and I almost want to develop that, the dream job within my business mm. so that they will never leave me and I can continue <laughs> retaining them. Mm. So I think salon owners now have an opportunity again to think at those what those progressions look like. Not every single one of our team members want to become a team leader or a manager within our business. So what does what that progression look like for individuals after three months being on, on, on lockdown and having an opportunity really to, to think about the future, the progression might look like actually I'm absolutely love doing lots of online training so for them that progression would be to have an opportunity within our business to continue progress in terms of training development for others um it will be a you know that, that, that career path will be very much around having that flexibility new ways of working having job security and having that culture and environment or you know good working conditions more interesting work Mm. And I think that's where I see the, the, the great opportunity here, because we're almost all going into a brand new business mm. and we're bringing in kind of what I like to, you know, a, a brand new team that they've had time to think about. Um, it, it's an opportunity for us to think about their key strengths, what ideas they've got to, to bring into the teams. And um, any individuals that, you know, that we, we, we all have individuals obviously have their personal development, you know, um, and we support in, into, you know, becoming better version of themselves or progressing them to the next level. That is going to be a, a very frank conversation because it will be an opportunity for us to say, you know what, we might need to look at different ways of progressing you for the time being. But just for a temporary situation, for a temporary amount of time, we might need to be quite inventive mm. of how, you know, what those career paths look like. I mean, I personally have lost, um, uh, I've had a resignation in the last month. And, and uh, the resignation was very much around my, one of my girls has, has had personal, uh, personal circumstances have changed. And I fully support her. You know, so as circumstances have changed, so within the team now, we've got an opportunity for someone to potentially pick up within that role and progress within that role. Mm. But, you know, every single business and every single salon is, is quite unique. So um, what I'm trying to say is that we need to really look in at, you know, what the progression look like for every yeah. single individual. And as I said, it might not necessarily be linked to, you know, a financial reward. Mm. It's also an opportunity for us to empower those members of staff as well and really get them to contribute anything, you know, in terms of what do you, do you think, get them excited to achieve within our business. Um, and even, you know, I think financial constraints and, you know, the, the fact that obviously we don't really know what we'll be able to afford in, in terms of, you know, with the commission structures. I think we've got an opportunity to, to maybe offer different incentives and rewards 
mm -hmm. then it might look a little bit different, you know. Um, I, I, in, based on my experience, you know, individuals are always, always wanting to be part of something significant. They want to be Im important and, and, be, and, and be praised and, and valued as well. And I think for, for some of them coming back into these new teams and, and having an opportunity to, to contribute uh, their ideas to, to our, our you know, future businesses will be an opportunity to progress in, in their own rights as well. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, you know, there will be also a number of, of, of incentives that, you know, every single salon will be able to, to sort of look at as well. And, um, and personally, obviously, if we look at targets as well, it, it's also very important that initially we, we, we help them win mm -hmm. the targets as well. So we actually give them that confidence again. Yeah. And obviously you've spoken about um, doing alternative incentives um, that isn't financial to help motivate them and develop during this time. What kind of alternative incentives are you thinking about implementing in your business? So in the past, um, for me, is has been um, someone that's done very well it would be in the form of a gift voucher. Mm. Um, we've had um, a bunch of flowers, a card, recognition as well, you know, just really praise them in front of clients or in, in, if someone has done really well, um, um, praise them in front of the team. Mm -hmm. And these are little things that actually don't cost us anything, but really do go a really long way into, you know, in, into those individuals. Um, you know, I think also with, with incentives and rewards, um, even you know, even having you know an afternoon off, or being able to give them the birthdays off, little little incentive, little, you know, just go really a long way for, for individuals. Yeah, um, they're very thoughtful those incentives, aren't they? I think they're things that will last with people and they'll remember that. So, um, yeah, I think every cake, yeah. every cake, you know. <laughs> Yeah, little things like that because and you know going back to, they, they know what they will know what the reality is for us mm. but it's quite important that when we realign our objectives where we what we want to achieve because whatever they want to achieve will be supporting them along the way it could well be that actually some of those little things might just need to take a step back and then we go back into it uh, once we actually know a little bit better about the business and we know more about the business as well. Mm. And obviously you said you've got you've got your two hats because obviously you're a salon owner but you've also got a recruitment business and you've given your salon an answer to this question but as a recruitment specialist you know is it a differing view? With, it, with my recruitment hat on, um, we've had a number of redundancies, as we know, in the sector. And I've been, over the last two months, I've been communicating quite a few clients. And there are jobs out there. There are quite a few jobs out there. Um, and, and I think one of the opportunities is that salon owners have had time to reflect. And perhaps I'm now saying, I don't have that skill set in my team. Right, yeah. They have an opportunity to think about the individual profiles. Actually, they some of them have created new roles as well to support them in the new vision. So mm -hmm. we look at it from a from a, a therapist or you know or a hairdresser's point of view or anyone that is wishing to move on into into the into the sector. I think there are there, will, there are opportunities already out there, and um, and there will be more opportunities out there as well. I think. Mm -hmm. And I've already taken, you know, uh, there are, quite, as I said, you know, quite a few jobs both. In fact, I've been even contacted because, you know, my, my with recruitment is not just in the UK, in the Middle East. Yeah. I've had loads of applications even, you know, from Dubai and, and Abu Dhabi. Um, individuals obviously wanting to leave the sunshine and come in here. <laughs> <laughs> so there are opportunities out there, even though it feels like it's a time where there's not. Um, I guess it's a case of having the, the confidence to recruit, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think as we move forward, there will be even more opportunities. And um, how can salon owners reevaluate therapist career paths? 
And when is the right time to do this after they've reopened? Like, you know, are you going to be waiting a couple of months or a three month period, a six month period? Like, do you have any kind of strategy in mind for that? I think that it's um, in terms of how we're going to reevaluate, we've got um, we've got an opportunity to really getting to know our staff again. Mm. Because all of us have in mind what our new business looks like. And I think in terms of reevaluating what they want is a shared responsibility. And it's an opportunity to have that discussion around what is it that they, they want to achieve, how and how quickly. And within in terms of um, in terms of time frame, I would say personally will be between six to eight weeks at the earliest that we, we, we you know will be able to actually have a, a better idea about you know what the what, what the salons look like and also for them whatever role they're doing to to have an opportunity to to feedback how they're settling in into that role and any new ideas they want to bring in whatever you know again whatever career path we're going to take them whatever progression um you know but i think every single one of them will have an an additional responsibility into our business to, to support us, evaluate, um, you know, the, the future with us. I think also for me, as I said already, it's, it's, it's having that clear, honest, shared vision from the start to make sure that everyone is, 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 um, is, is basically following the right path. But I also would like to add that based on my experiences, whatever you promise your staff, you've got to keep put your words to it. So it's also important if we say we're going to evaluate or reevaluate and sit down in eight weeks time, I would diarize that date already. I would have that date in the diary. So we all have a date to look forward to. Could well be that, you know, when we evaluate, we still maybe, you know, agree on new objectives, agree on new things, but also I think it's quite important to give them an opportunity to, to feel and, and to, to, to get them to have a contribution in the first, you know, in that first period of time. Yeah, I think that's so true. Having that open communication and letting them have a voice, having that shared vision, and hopefully all of this will result in them having a very good career path and also the business hopefully flourishing when it is able to reopen. And that's kind of the goal for everyone, isn't it? Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Well, Stefania, they were all the questions I had for you. Thank you so much. So anybody who's watching, if you do have any questions for Stefania, if you just pop it in the comment box, um, I will run them by her and we will try and get as many of these answered as we can in the time. Um, we've actually had a couple come through already, so I might just start going through them if that's all right with you. Sure. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so the first one is from Sam from Low Ears, and she's asked, um, Will you be reissuing new COVID employment contracts, protecting yourself and your team? And would you recommend a complete rehash of existing caveats and contracts that protect all parties? Hi, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Yes, we are already working to, to make sure that we, you know, in our new contracts, we have um, safety measures for our staff, safety procedures, and certainly to make sure that we are protecting our teams in every possible way. As I said, even earlier on, it's so important that we look after the well-being of our staff and the mental well-being of our staff um, as part of anything else, you know, within, you know, social distancing, within whether or not it's um, PPE, and, and, you know, we make sure it's all part of our risk assessments. I hope that's answered your question, Sam. Um, I've just seen we've got a viewer from Cape Town. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Which is amazing. Um, we've had another question on Facebook from Katrina Baxter, and she's asked, can she bring back a pregnant member of staff? Will it be safe? Hi, Katrina. HR is not one of my <laughs> <laughs> key expertise. I think um, with that particular member of staff, I would suggest that you speak to, um, you know, your HR consultant. Um, and, you know, obviously as part of your discussions now, already sort of have a bit of an idea about, you know, what, um, you know, what they're thinking, what they're doing. Obviously, she's at risk. So there will be quite a few different 
implications and complications that I think is best for your um, HR expert to, to, to advise you on, on that. Thanks for your question, Katrina. Um, we've had an anonymous question come through on Zoom, and this is more for your recruitment hat, Stefania. Um, mm -hmm. They're just wondering how you think the demand for spa therapists and spa, for, uh, spa management jobs will be globally, like what the demand will be like for the rest of this year. Well, how do you think it's going to be? That is a very interesting question because obviously, you know, the spa sector again is very very different and we not as different as but i think there will be other restrictions as well in terms of, of, of spas and particularly around massages mm. so i think there is still so many unknowns at this point in time around you know are we allowed to massage um you know all around the close proximity work and it's still sort of all in the in in in, in the unknown, I'm afraid. So it'll, it's, it's a really difficult question um, to, to answer at this point in time about what will be what will be happening to, to our spas in, in the future. I think it's hard as well, isn't it? Because especially in the UK, spas are classed differently to beauty salons, because obviously we know in England and in Scotland, they are potentially allowed to open in phase three if everything goes well, but there's not really been a mention of spa, has there? There's not really been clear mm. um, guidance on when they might be able to reopen and what that would look like. So I guess that's something to come and I guess we'll see how that affects that side of the industry. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, again, the restrictions for spas, um, obviously, you know, um, because obviously they've got water facilities, um, and why do we also, you know, we love, oh, love to go back to a spa, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Just for some rest and relaxation. Uh, but yeah. It's but, a very, it's, it, we, we uh, you know, because of the, the amount of, of unknowns at this point in time, it's, it's so hard to, I mean, personally, I love to, you know, I've worked with many, many spas over the last couple of years and I've recruited for large spas as well. Um, so fingers crossed. Yeah. Thank you, whoever that was that um, popped that question in. Um, Maria Chamberlain on Zoom has asked about when you are thinking of reopening. Are you going to be opening on that suggested date if everything goes well and the July 4th date in England or will you be opening a little bit later? Hi, Maria. Um, we will be looking, if, if the 4th of July stays as the reopening date, I think we'll be looking to reopen the 6th, Monday the 6th or the 7th of July. So not, it's, it's quite difficult, you know, but why on a Saturday, you know? It's, <laughs> I think also having an, an extra couple of days, it, it's, um, it's going to be critical for us to get together with the teams, working with the teams, um, getting all the, you know, all the, those protocols and treatments um, procedures in place, um, you know, and, and for us to really get together and reconnect as a team as well. So I'd rather, my focus would be, you know, even if we have to close another couple of days, but to make sure that we are all coming in um, as a mm. great strong team. <laughs> And as you said earlier, um, we're still waiting on those definitive guidelines to come through the government of what um, beauty businesses need to adhere to when they open. So who knows, that could come through quite late and throw in a little bit of a curveball for people. I guess it's just a, it's a bit of a waiting game at the moment, isn't it? It's a waiting game and we are all so excited to start. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you so much for that question, Maria. Um, Carolina Brennan has asked on Zoom, have you managed to reach out to clients during lockdown? I guess maybe she's asking for a little bit of advice around that. Hi, Carolina. Um, we have done a little bit. We have done a huge amount of retail. We've had um, um, quite a few consultations with our clients. We've, we've answered all the clients' queries. Our, um, our retail has been okay. It hasn't been, you know, crazy busy or crazy mental we just you know um, fulfilled um every single order but he has not been as normal as we as easy would be if, if he was you know a full-on um open salon mm. and it's not it's not um i don't know even know you know perhaps why i mean we you know we've been uh, communicating with our clients regularly we've uh, posted um on social media um, yeah, I guess it's, sometimes it's quite difficult for 
well, some clients have, have fallen off their own skincare regime as well, I think. <laughs> And um, we've had a comment from Lisa Young, and she said um, this return, I guess, between the salon owner and employee needs to be two ways. Staff need to understand and support the employer to help the business survive. It needs a longer term focus by all. Ultimately, you cannot give commission and run at a loss. Unfortunately, some staff will be held more accountable now for their performance to targets. Um, what do you think of that, Stavania? 100%. I didn't get the name of the, 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 the girl. Um, Lisa Young. Luciane. Uh, Lisa, sorry, Lisa. Uh, Lisa <laughs> that was me. Yes, 100%. I share the same. And I think um, it's, it is the harsh reality. It is, you know, the, the financial reality we're in. Um, everyone needs to, to understand, you know, our point of view as, as salon owners in terms of what we can do. But also help them really um, realign to, to our objectives. And, and, and give them an opportunity to, again, to, to reevaluate that progression, that career path as well. I think we cannot go into a business where we'll be losing money on a daily basis, just purely because we need to stick to, um, uh, to that commission structure. It's impossible. It, it, we won't be able to. And I think um, that, that new normality will be need to be shared with, with, with the team members. So yeah, I fully agree. Yeah, she's actually um, replied as she was speaking, just said it is a difficult task to work for the benefit of the business and ultimately safeguard everyone's role long term too. That's right. And, and that's why I think, you know, those conversations, what I call truthful conversations, are so, so important. Yeah. Um, and we will see, we will see. I mean, you know, um, Lisa, we will see some members of staff, but they're not going to, to share our, our, you know, our commitment, they're not going to be able to share the same vision and we will see a change in what our, those teams look like. So, you know, it, it, our teams might look different in the future because they don't, they don't buy in or, you know, maybe they don't, don't, they, don't um, they don't want to contribute or see, um, you know, what we think. But I think that's something that we need to be really mindful of that, you know, our themes might change a little bit too. Yeah, it's like you said, it's in essence, you're starting with a whole new business, aren't you really? And um, sort of, yeah, your team can change throughout this. It's just a case of seeing how it goes. Um, I don't think, I don't even think, if I can just add Lisa, I think that based on that, I don't think we should see it as a, as, um, a personal attack. I think we should leave the emotion on the side um we just maybe do uh, just to accept that you know those individuals in our teams have changed yeah. and essentially you know what they were doing as far or what our vision was before they might not be part of that anymore and um i had another question for you stefania actually which i meant to ask you earlier and but i didn't want to break up your flow um is when it comes to bringing back staff off from furlough, you know, how will you manage it if you bring back someone part time who was full time before and they would like to come back full time, but you're just not able to do that at the moment? How are you going to manage that? So what, what I'm doing at the moment, Amanda, with my teams is that um, I'm consulting with the teams. So um, I've devised this little document which is asking them about, you know, uh, have their personal circumstances changed? When we open, are they able to, to come in um, a variety of hours? Can they do additional hours? And if so, what hours they can do? Right. Um, if individuals have issues, personal issues or childcare issues. So it's, it's um, we're going about it in a, in a kind of a consultation. Mm. And it sort of, you know, so basically we're including everyone as more of a comprehensive. So that, obviously that is helping me decide who are we bringing in, you know, first and foremost, and who needs to stay on furlough. So um, I, I definitely think that it's so important that we, that consultation takes place. We just don't just go off in and, and just decide without, you know, consulting with the teams, because actually you'll be surprised the fact that, you know, um, as, as a team, we bring in the best solution possible for the business and for the, yeah. and, and for the teams, for the team members. 
Yeah, I think that's such a good method and a way of doing it, that consultation. And I think that would be really valuable for other people to hear. Um, but that's all that we had time for today, Stefania. Um, so thank you to everybody who's been watching and for submitting your questions. They'd be brilliant. And thank you so much, to Stefania, for giving us your time today to share your knowledge with us. Um, anybody who's come in this um, halfway through or anything like that, this video will be available on PV's Facebook page indefinitely and it will be going up on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So you can always go back, rewatch it if you were, if you'd missed the start or anything like that. I know there's a couple of people who had commented in, but um, everybody's saying thanks so much, Stefania. Thanks Thank for your particular interview. You've been excellent, so encouraging and positive really helpful presentation lovely session so yeah just an outpouring of love for you which is oh, lovely thank you thanks for having me no that's okay and yeah hopefully i will see you at a show or some event in the future and it'd be nice to see each other absolutely. again absolutely and hopefully <laughs> talk at some point that'd be nice too <laughs> um but thank you everybody who's been watching and we've got lots more webinars and stuff happening this week if you just go to any of our social media channels or our website you can find them there but otherwise thank you so much everyone have a lovely day and hopefully see you all soon in the future thanks, thanks amanda bye everyone bye.